guys. Oh, sorry. I never, I never do this, but I swear to God, they have my favorite beer in the green room. So he just brought his beer went, out. Went in Rome. Sorry. It's Friday, and we're with Superman. So why not Friday. have a beer? Go. I'm gonna have one after this. I was a little nervous, so maybe I needed a beer. Guys, I'm in my Superman colors, if you haven't noticed. I'm so pumped that you're here. We're so excited for Superman to be on Supergirl. Yeah. Uh, tell me about landing this role and, and what it's meant for you, because I'm sure growing up as a kid, you always wanted to play a superhero. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think every, I think every kid kind of has that fantasy and that idea. Um, it's been it's been a lot of fun. I think um, you know honestly one of the coolest things in the whole experience was we were shooting one day uh, out in like a public location and I had the suit on and one of our PAs went over and got these four little kids that were kind of waiting and watching and uh, brought them over. It's like two little boys, two little girls, like seven, eight years old, and I'm talking to them and <laughs> kind of like this weird realization that to them right now like I'm Superman. Uh, like they, they don't know my name, they don't know who I am, they don't care, um, <laughs> and so, which is great, because it was just like, for a minute, I kind of got to be this symbol to these little kids, um, and not only was it great to like make their day and make them smile and stuff, but it was also like, selfishly, it was like informative for the character that like, that's, that's who this guy is, like he's this guy that kids are supposed to look at and be like, oh my god, like I can do anything, I can be anything, and you know, good can triumph over evil, so that was kind of like a, it's kind of like a cool moment, so that's kind of what it's meant to me to do it. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. That's awesome. And what was it like to slip into that costume the first time? Um, how did it feel? Was it uh, tight? <laughs> slip, slipping in is, uh, that's not the correct way to phrase it. It's uh, definitely not that easy. But um, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a really, really nice, fancy wetsuit. <laughs> so uh, I did a little surfer trick and started putting on with like plastic bags around your feet. And I started to really uh, admire Superman's ability to switch that quickly. I think that's actually like his greatest superpower. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a weird, surreal feeling. And um, you know, you're wearing a suit that all of a sudden like you've seen your entire life. And uh, you feel like you're wearing the nicest Halloween costume you've ever had. Uh, so it's a, it's, it's a very, very surreal kind of moment. And were you a fan of Supergirl? before and how did you come about to find this role was it an audition where you know you reached out to uh yeah I mean I was a huge fan of Melissa's um you know I worked with her husband on a film and so she's just the sweetest and I think she's done such a such a great job on the show and the rest of the cast as well um but I actually it was the weirdest thing I, it wasn't an audition um don't know why this is one of those like fortunate times where it was just a, a meeting with uh Greg Berlanti and Andrew Kreisberg the producers and creators and um we just kind of, I really was there not under the pretense that it was for Superman. It was just for a role that was coming up on Supergirl. And um, we sat down and they kind of brought up Superman and asked if that was something I'd be interested in talking about. And I said, sure, of course, um, let's, let's talk about it. And we just, we had a great chat kind of about, you know, what we all personally found interesting about the character and fascinating and different conflicts and things like that. Uh, and we just kind of hit it off. So that was on a Monday and on Friday we got the call for the offer and... That was it. So you didn't even know you were going in to play Superman. No, I had no idea. Awesome. Probably, probably better that way. I think. So were you so nervous when it, you were told that you're going to pl be playing Superman because you know so many actors have played him in the past? Yeah. Um, and what did you kind of want to bring to it that would make it your own? Um, in in a way that like I really hope does not come off cocky <laughs> or arrogant. Um, I really don't know why, but for some reason. Um, Doing this, I, I told my agents, I told my family, like getting ready to go and shoot it, I, I've never felt more calm going into a job. Um, I think just because we, the meeting we had was such a great meeting and I had such a strong sense of what I personally found interesting about this character. Um, and knowing that Greg and Andrew had confidence in that idea, uh, I just wanted to go in and do what we wanted. It was just, it was, so it was kind of something just like we had a target and a place to aim for and that's what we went for. So. Um, as far as making it our own, I just kind of, you know, I, I stayed away from the other, the other Superman things. I didn't go back and look at anything. I didn't want to have that thought in my mind of, oh, that's too similar to what so-and-so did, or that's not close enough. Like, I just wanted to do it the way that the scripts came in, look at the scripts, find how he fits into this world, because um, they've done such a great job of establishing the tone of the show in the first season. Um, we just kind of found, like, where he fit, so we wanted him to blend in really easily. So tell us, uh, of course, you're going to be in the first episode of season two, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you guys are so excited to see. I was fortunate enough to see it, and I think it's seamless. It's perfect. Thank you. Um, but let's set the stage for everybody. Um, 
kind of talk about Clark Kent coming back into yeah. the Supergirl world and where it all begins. Uh, yeah, Clark, uh, Clark makes a pretty early appearance. Um, Clark is kind of, the fun thing about this was finding where, you know, Clark kind of fits into this whole thing because Superman is such an iconic symbol and person that, uh, you know, you, you have ways to vary um, how you portray him, but at the end of the day, it's still Superman, so you kind of have to hold true to some of the, you know, traditional values and things that make him who he is. Um, Clark, there's a little bit more freedom to play with because he's, he's more of, like, the human side of it. He's the guy who goes to work every day and, you know, has to deal with, you know, a boss who may be kind of breathing down his neck or, you know, relationship that might not be working out so well, you know, whether it's a friend or, you know, a relationship with Lois, whatever it might be. Like, those are the things that you kind of get a little bit more flexibility with. Uh, so it was really fun to <laughs> kind of find his personality, his sense of humor, uh, and, you know, figure out how he responds to everyday life situations. Um, so that was a really fun thing. And I think just kind of exploring that with the relationship with Kara, uh, it was just, it was, it was a great, great chance to, you know, kind of play with those things. And you sort of talked about knowing Melissa a little bit before the yeah. show. And, of course, on the family you play, I mean, on the show you play cousins. Yeah. Um, so was it kind of automatic family vibe or did you girl did you guys have to work at it a little bit no not really um melissa's great she's like the sweetest person you'll ever meet like she she is like supergirl like the symbol that she is to like everybody in the show like she's just the sweetest person in the world and she works so hard um and she's a fantastic fantastic actress um so we had a blast but we always joked because there were, there were times on set where you know, we, one of us would ask someone a question and we'd go to turn around and bump into the other one. And we just said, like, honest to God, if you just would roll the cameras when we're on set together, you'd probably get just as much, like, Clark and Kara stuff as you would when we're shooting. Because uh, we both tend to be a little bit, <laughs> I think, a little bit more, like, clumsy and nerdy like those two, yeah. other than the, yeah, the alter egos. I love it. Yeah. And were you nervous at all to kind of step into uh, Melissa's world a little bit, this being Supergirl? Um, were you you know, cognizant of the fact that Superman was coming into this world and you didn't kind of want to overplay it too much? Um, yes and no. I think it, it's kind of one of those things where, again, it was almost informative for the character that, you know, it's not an origin story for him. You know, he's, at this point, he's been around for a while. He's been doing it for a long time. Um, and so coming into this, he's really there to support her. And, and so at the end of the day, it that lends itself to a supporting role. So it's very much, it's, it's about Supergirl, um, you know, it's her show, it's her story. So it's really just a chance for him to be there and interact with her and to kind of let you, you know, even further into her world and know what family means to her and see how they interact. So, um, no, I mean, the, her, and Melissa, the entire cast, the crew were so great and welcoming that they made me feel really comfortable right away. Uh, and it, it really was. It was a very, very painless, very fun process. What were the stunts like? Did you get to do some cool stuff uh, for this premiere episode? Yeah, yeah, we could do a little, little fighting, a uh, little fighting, a little flying. Uh, flying was the new one. I've done stunts before, but the flying thing that was a that was a, a good first. flyer. <laughs> I, I think I was passable. I think it was okay. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, I, I, I will let the public be the judge of that. But I, I felt pretty good about it. Yeah. What's it like to shoot that stuff on set and then to kind of go back and watch it after, you know, they put effects in and everything like that? Because um, it's probably such a different experience to actually shoot it than it is yeah. for us to get that whole dynamic and vibe. Yes. Um, I'm so excited. This is the first time I get to tell this story. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> there is nothing sadder than wearing a Superman outfit, being in the middle of a scene and having to exit the scene by flying away but the scene continues after you fly away because the only thing you can do is jump up in the air and land immediately and then run off of set with your cape trailing behind you <laughs> while they all pause and wait for you to get off camera so that they can continue the scene. <laughs> so um, the first time I had to do that, I remember running off and getting to the side and just being like, that had to look so stupid uh, that was <laughs> that was one of the funniest. And then Melissa had to do the exact same thing, and she's hilarious. And so of course she jumps up, lands, and then like does like a run waddle off camera like <laughs> this, so they can finish the scene at the end of it. And it's just it's so it, it's such an interesting thing because you watch that and you go, this looks ridiculous. This looks so stupid. <laughs> uh, and then you go back and you see it. You know what they do with it with the effects and with the music and everything. And it's you know you're running down the street and all of a sudden you're flying 50 stories in the air. So it's, it's really impressive what they do, and I think they do a great job with the effects. So it, it is fun 
to see that happen because <laughs> you know how you feel when you shoot it, yeah. which is really ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, and then they end up making it look amazing. So yeah, it's it's cool to see that. I can only imagine being attached to all that gear and being floated in the. Yeah. It can't be that comfortable, can it? Um, it's not the coziest place to be, <laughs> but it, at the end of the day, like you do, kind of sit there and go, "I'm flying around in a Superman outfit. Like life isn't that bad. It's, yeah. it's pretty good." So uh, yeah, it's all all about perspective. And and this uh, episode has a ton of action in it. You know, they yeah. they throw us right back into this world, guys. It's pretty unbelievable. Um, but we get a little nod or a mention of Lex Luthor, although he's not in it. Um, can you kind of give everyone a, a little sneak peek of what they can expect on Monday, villain-wise, and what's going on there? Um, this is my this is my first request for a sneak peek on this show, so I'm still I'm still getting used to what I can and can't say on this one. Um, I think I think you can kind of expect to see you know where things left off in the first season um, and getting even bigger and and better. I think the you know um, they've been really excited about what we've been able to do over at the the CW now the show moving over and uh, you know being in Vancouver and shooting where they have all those other shows that they that they do in this universe. So uh, it's been it's been really fun to see what they've done so far. But I think. You can look forward to you know a new team assembling, uh, and you know the the good parts of that and the conflict that comes with that as well. Um, there's some relationships that are very good and some that aren't quite as great. Um, so it'll be fun to see how this new dynamic plays out. And how long can we expect Superman to stick around uh, on Supergirl? If you have any idea. Um. Well, I I, I know he's in the first one. Um, <laughs> no, he's in the first one, and I and I believe I'm not spoiling anything by saying he sticks around for a little bit longer than that. But um, you know, throughout the season, who knows? Uh, you know, that's up to the writers and the producers and the studios and all those people. So, uh, you know, when they call, we'll we'll talk again. But for right now, we'll just we'll see where it lies. Hopefully, hopefully, you guys enjoy the first couple. And uh, you know, Superman has a thing with kryptonite. So I wanted to ask you, what is your personal kryptonite, if you have anything? Oh God, um, like what kills me, or like what <laughs> will be the death of me? Um, What's a weakness? A weakness? Um, I'm gonna say I'm, I'm gonna say pizza. Pizza's pizza. a weakness. Yeah. I'm gonna say I don't really see a weakness it's over hard. here, guys. But no, that's that one. <laughs> that one. That one will kill me. If someone says I can't have pizza, it's like ah, that's like the one. That's like the one you can take away that I get really, really sad about. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I think um, yeah, I think that's. Do you the have one. like a strict workout for Superman, or were you kind of already? Um, I I did. I had to get back in the gym again. Yeah. That was uh, one of those things. Like it's it's Superman. So like no matter what kind of shape you're in, you kind of feel like if I don't <laughs> put more work into this, I'm failing. Uh, so yeah, it was uh it was kind of one of those put on as much weight as you can as quick as you can. Uh, so back in the gym, eating a lot, which was that was actually the great part of it. I enjoyed that part immensely. <laughs> um, a lot of pizza, a lot of Chinese food. It's amazing. Uh, but yeah, so I think, you know, that, that's kind of one of those roles where no matter what, you kind of have to push it as far as you can. And then just at the end of the day, you are where you are. And you were telling me backstage that you ran into somebody at the gym who was a pretty big guy himself. Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I was up in Vancouver and we were shooting and there's a, there's a hotel that people tend to stay at when they're shooting up there. And, um, this guy working out next to me, he looked kind of familiar. There's like three or four people around him. I was like, that's really odd. Um, <laughs> usually you only need like one spotter or something. <laughs> and so uh, all of a sudden he comes over and he sits on the thing like right next to me. And there's a mirror there. And I'm not trying to see who it is, but all of a sudden I'm like, oh, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's, that's why. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the, <laughs> the, worst, the worst part about this was I was doing an exercise called an Arnold press that's <laughs> named after him. So I was like really concentrating on my form because it was like the one time I did not want to be doing a bad Arnold press in front of Arnold. So uh, yeah, that was, <laughs> there's a, a lot of focus going on in those few minutes. Did you get to meet him at all or talk to him? No, no, he was he was in his zone. He was doing his thing. So we just kind of just like ah, that's kind of cool. And like yeah. yeah, someone asked me if the gym was good there, and I was like, well, it's good enough for Schwarzenegger, so I I have to say yes. Yeah, good enough for me. It's good enough for him. It's good enough for me. So you're kind of, in a way, you know, with the CW, it used to be considered the WB. And you, yeah. of course, were on a show called Seventh Heaven back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Hey, all right. <laughs> Is it weird for you uh, to sort of picture Martin and now you're Superman? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's interesting. But it's, yeah, it's funny to kind of to circle back. And I think, cause I think the WB was actually switching over to CW like right as we were ending on that. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of one of those weird like full circle moments. 
What are, do you have any fond memories from the set of Seventh Heaven, I'm sure? And None. Was it None. weird? No, not at all. Let's share some, <laughs> shall we? Um, what a yeah. cast. That, was, that must have been fun, though. But, you know, those yeah. kind of shows, they come and go. You know, you had the Seventh Heaven and the One Tree yeah. Hill. The Gilmore Girls is coming back. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that, I've, been, I've been extremely lucky in my, in my life and my career to, you know, have been on some really great sets and situations where you're there for a long time. And, you know, I know people that aren't as lucky and are stuck on sets where not everyone gets along the greatest. And, uh, you know, that's, that's not a fun place to work. But um, every place that I've worked for an extended period of time, and really even the short ones, um, have had a great, great time and worked with really great people. Um, you know, people that I still stay in touch with and are, you know, part of my life. And uh, that's special because in this business, a lot of times you kind of, you know, you become a family really quickly and then you kind of all go your separate ways and that's kind of it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I was going through high school at that time. So, you know, I was, I was making friends. I was driving for the first time. I was going to set by myself for the first time, like feeling like an adult and, you know, everyone treated me like an adult. And so it was, it was like that first experience. Um, so I had, yeah, I had a tremendous time growing up on that set. Is everyone at your school kind of like, oh my God, you're on Seventh Heaven? I wonder mm. what that's like to be a child actor. No, not, not everyone. No, um, <laughs> some people were like that. Uh, no, but majority of the people that I hung out with were my baseball teammates. And, uh, their Tuesday afternoon practice ritual was watching Seventh Heaven Monday night to know what to make fun of me for. Aww the entire hour leading up to the game on, on Tuesday. Uh, so, yeah, every, every Tuesday I was always like, oh, God, all right, well, yeah, this is You could just turn fun. to them and be like, uh, I'm on set with Jessica Biel, so. <laughs> I know. did have that one over them, yes. But, uh, no, I mean, those are, you know, those are your true friends. Those are the ones, like, the ones that still text me, like, even when I get the Superman thing and be like, you're never going to pull it off. <laughs> it's like, those are, those are the ones that stick around for a while. Did you always know you wanted to be an actor then? Um, were you kind of... Were you into theater and stuff in, in high school? Um, I, was never in, I was never in theater in high school. Um, I started when I was eight years old, so it's been over 20 years now, which is crazy. Um, but I think I kind of just randomly fell into it, and then I, I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, I booked a couple little jobs, and then when I was 13, um, I booked a film called Road to Perdition. And um, that, was, that was the first experience where I went, okay, this is definitely something that I'm not just doing for now. It's something I'm going to want to do for the rest of my life eventually. Um, baseball was still my first passion all the way through college, and so that's where my focus was. But, um, yeah, I think after that shoot, I knew that it was going to be something eventually I would pursue full-time. Yeah, Road to Perdition. I mean, that's Tom Hanks, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Man, what a good movie. <laughs> that's a good, good movie to start on. It was not It was not a bad place to start. Some very good very good role models, very good examples. You know, Paul Newman, Jude Law, Daniel Craig. Um, and it just, you know, it was, a, it was a great learning experience for me. I always say if I could go back and do one experience in my life again, I would love to do that knowing what I know now. Just because, you know, the things I'm sure I would have picked up on and paid attention to. Uh, that probably flew over my head at 13. It would, I would love that experience again, but um, still invaluable. And I just, you know, I'm always, always grateful for that. I think those guys, just as much as I learned from about, about acting from them, I think just how to conduct yourself, how to be as a person in this environment and what you do. I mean, they were the greatest guys. And, and everyone who says, you know, Tom Hanks is the nicest guy. He's the nicest guy. He would never know he does what he does. Or he is who he is or whatever you want to phrase that. But um, yeah, just genuinely great people. Did you call up Daniel Craig to get some, you know, he's Bond, you get some advice on playing <laughs> Superman from James Bond? Yeah, no, I would, I would, uh, I, yeah, I would love to, I would love to talk to Daniel about that. I think, I, I was so glad, I was so glad when he got, when he got that job, and I know, like, when he first got it, there was a lot of, you know, backlash and stuff, and uh, I just, I was so happy when the first one came out, and everybody kind of quieted down about it, because he's a phenomenal, Now everyone's phenomenal sad actor. that he's going to leave. They're like, I know, I know, him. and everybody wants to keep him, so. Yeah, we'll see. Hopefully he sticks around for a little bit longer. And you were saying you were a baseball player. Yeah. You played baseball in Seventh Heaven, right? And then you were in yeah. uh, Everybody Wants Some, which I'm sure, did you guys see this year? That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Thank you. With Blake Jenner, who you mentioned, is yep. Melissa's husband. Um, I, another little connection there. Yep. Uh, is it cool to play baseball on screen since you're so good at it? Uh, yeah, it is fun. It's, I kind of get to like do my two passions at the same time. Um, the Seventh Heaven thing, it was so funny because I it was like that was not originally a part of the character. Uh, it just kind of I think they knew that's what I was doing in my life, and so it kind of like made its way into the show, <laughs> which was really random. Uh, and so that was just kind of a, an afterthought. But um, 
But yeah, Everybody Wants Some was such a such an incredible experience. I think just because I got to go back to a place that I knew so well um, and kind of live through that again. And it really was, in a weird way, you know, teams, you get very close. Um, this was such a close team because everybody was so into it, so committed. Um, and it wasn't just, you know, the athletic side of it because you were playing a baseball team, but being in a creative environment as well, uh, you know, you, you have conversations and you talk about things and you kind of get to know each other really quickly and really well. Uh, so it became like a, probably like the closest team I've ever played on, even though it was in a movie, um, just because we were, you know, sharing and not only, you know, hey, you might take my job tomorrow and I got to outplay that guy. It's like we're all trying to elevate each other to make this movie as good as we possibly can. So uh, it was a really unique experience and, I mean, just the greatest, greatest time I've had shooting. It was so much fun. Don't tell your high school team that. that you, no, it's you okay. Guys, it's okay. I'm, I'm playing them in fantasy football <laughs> this weekend. We, we, we have a bad relationship right now anyway. Oh, I love it. <laughs> high school buddies. Before oh, yeah. I toss it off to the audience, though, you talked about going back to something. Uh, there's a lot of chatter about Teen Wolf coming to an end. And yeah. if you'll make an appearance in the series finale at all, uh, the finale season, yeah. can you say anything about that? And would you like to go back? Uh, I always say with TV, anything could happen, and you never know. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what they end up doing. But yeah, I mean, it's it's amazing that that show started. Um, and we shot the pilot in 2009, and so uh, they're gonna hit 100 episodes this year, which is crazy. Because I remember si saying like season one that I thought we could go six seasons, and we were only doing 12 episodes at the time. So it would have been 72, and they're making it to 100. So it's pretty pretty incredible. That's a while. Yeah. I mean, you played a wolf, you're playing Superman, you're doing pretty well for yourself, I think. Trying out the different <laughs> elevated genres, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's pass it off to the audience for All some right. questions. Hey. Oh, my Hi. God. I'm so nervous. <laughs> okay, uh, before I ask my question, wolf pack forever. But, um, yeah, so <laughs> if you could choose, besides Superman, obviously, but if you could choose to live the life of any role that you have played, which one would it be? But it can't be Superman. Oh. Ooh, live the life of any role that I've played. Um... I would say, hmm. <laughs> oh, no, I, mean, I don't even know why I'm thinking about it. I would love to play, I would love to be McReynolds in Everybody Wants Some. <laughs> like, it's, uh, it's baseball, he's a first round prospect, uh, it's 1980, the sh shorts are very short, um, the mustaches are outrageous. And which, by the way, that mustache is a part of my passport photo. Um, oh. I had to renew it while we were shooting. So every time I come back into the States now, they look at me a little bit longer than they used to. Um, <laughs> say you live in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah totally. totally. I, no, actually, thank God. It's, it's in November. So I always say, I'm so sorry they caught me in November. And they just, I get the Movember kind of forgiveness. I um, grow a beard. Just <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I think that would have just been fun. And honestly, shooting that. You know, we all got away from our cell phones. Um, we couldn't have them on set because you all had very tight and short shorts usually. So you had nowhere to hide it. Um, and I just, you know, I really enjoyed that. I loved, you know, I try to do that in my life. You know, if I'm at dinner, I never touch my phone. I try to just be kind of where I'm at. And so to live in that environment for a little while was really fun. Like you go to a, a nightclub and everybody's dancing and everybody's dancing. No one's, you know, texting like, hey, is it better over there? Like just have a good time where you're at, just have fun. So I, I loved that. So if I could live in that world a little bit, I think I would have enjoyed it. I want to go back to the 80s. I mean, I was born in 88, so it's like, yeah, when were you born? 87. Yeah, we're, we're right around the yeah, same time. Yeah, we got the end of it. I'll just pretend <laughs> I lived through the 80s. Who's next? So um, obviously, you're one of the few characters that exists at the same time in the Berlantiverse and the Zack Snyderverse. And obviously, there's been debates between Grant Gustin's portrayal of The Flash and Ezra Miller's portrayal yeah. of The Flash. And after the episodes aired, people seem to prefer the TV versions of the character because they seem more true and lighthearted. So how, when obviously these comparisons happen come Monday, yeah. um, do you think, do you think, because people may like your character more than Henry Cavill's, how will you process, you know, will you enjoy that or these endless debates that will happen? Um, I, I'm really indifferent about it. I, you know, I personally just hope people do enjoy this version of it. Um, I would never, I would never compare the characters, especially when you play the same character, because you have to consider so many things: the tone of the project, the, you know, the surrounding characters, the story you're telling, um, the director's vision for it. So um, that's really not a concern. I just, you know, personally, I just do hope people enjoy what we've done. Um, naturally, comparisons will happen, but it's one of those things that you know, <laughs> I've kind of gotten over that. Where when I 
when I was a younger actor, when I was still playing baseball, I was, I'm, I'm a very competitive person. Uh, that's the one thing McReynolds and I have very much in common um, <laughs> from that movie. And so, uh, you know, coming into acting, so much of the way I would look at things was still as a competition. Um, in the last few years, that has completely changed in the way that I look at things. I no longer look at a job and, you know, get upset if someone else gets it over me. I mean, I may be disappointed that I don't get the chance to play that character because I really wanted to. But at the end of the day, um, you know, it's not about who's better necessarily. Sometimes it is, obviously, but a lot of times it just has to do with who's right for that character. So um, it, comparing things and feeling like, oh, that one's better than that one, that's not really, that's a competitive way of kind of looking at it. And now I just look at it as like, that's, that's the story they're telling and that's their artistic approach to it and we have ours. And so um, I just hope that people enjoy it for what it is. And that's kind of that's like the only focus, so. We'll see. We're going to take our final question from an online viewer. Okay. So Katrina would like to know, what aspect of joining Supergirl has been the most unexpected? Ooh. The most unexpected? <laughs> uh, the amount of singing and dancing that goes on on set. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Melissa did come from Glee, so I could. Yes, yes. Everybody there is very musically gifted. Uh, they, liked, they like to move around to, to stay awake in the later hours of the day. Um, so yeah, there's some there's some some song and dance going on on set, and uh, you know it keeps it fun, it keeps it light, and kind of you know keeps everybody mood everybody's mood up. So uh, that's been that's been a lot of fun. Are you a singer and dancer yourself? God no, no no no. Huh. I dance a little. I can dance a little bit, a little bit, uh, but I would never never take myself seriously as as either one. So until the project comes along where I have to really focus, we'll see. Well, guys, if you're listening, casting agents, this guy wants to dance. <laughs> he wants to dance. Well, we can't wait to see you on Monday on Supergirl. I hope you stick around for a little while because you're a you. great Superman. Thank you very um, thank much. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, guys.